And I remember the other brands that we called up to go help us do that. And I remember them saying, you got to think about the visual. If you give everybody out there your old good, you still have your product on people who are distressed and may not be looking good in your product. And you're just going to bring down the the value or the perception of right. your brand. And I, I remember that. us saying, yeah, you know what? Uh, you know, you know, do me a favor, go fuck yourself, and we're gonna go and help these people. F U B U. For us, by us, on the low. So now let's move on to another picture. Let's 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 get another slide up. See what we got here. Let's let's look at this one here. All right. So, so this one is is you know we we refurbished a lot of parks in the inner city because the kids didn't have places to go to. Now, I'm only going to really you know bring up one topic. I'm gonna let you guys you know dig deeper into who's in the picture and everything else. So, this was you know I remember we gave back so much in so many different areas and we never wanted to publicize this. Now we did this photo op and doing it to let people know the park was there and we gave it to them and we spent a lot of money on refurbishing um, parks in the inner city um, but we never did anything more than that we didn't go and advertise it and publish it because you know I always said you know we didn't want to make money off of people's hardships by saying look what we're doing and back then you couldn't do that and I remember we got a huge backlash uh, people said oh you didn't give back you don't love you know you don't love the community that supports you and unlike today where, you know, like the Bomba socks of the world, the Tom shoes of the world, where you can buy a, buy something and you know that they're giving back because, because content and, and social media is out. We couldn't do that. But this was such a good feeling from whether we were dealing with Hale House or, or Women's Battered Fund or this one. But tell us the story behind this because I, I know you guys got a much better memory than me about being in that park and Wilt Chamberlain and everybody else there. You, you know what's excited for me? was that I used to work down the block on, a, you know, right down the block on 135th Street at, uh, at the apartments, uh, 135th Street Apartments. So even though it wasn't in our neighborhood that we were doing it in, it still felt good that we were actually going out there and putting this stuff, you know, we doing these, uh, these uh, parks and giving back. I know Carl did his high school, went back to his high school and did his high school over. But like you said, the, you know, a lot of people didn't know that we did a lot of this stuff because we didn't promote it. And um, I remember the, the, the funniest thing I remember about back then was this lady once said, why don't you guys, you know, have the news people out here and talking about what you're doing in the neighborhood. And we were like, this is not for the news people. This is for you. You know, this is not about them. This is about you seeing what we're doing for the community. And and she said, well, they're going to report when you're doing something bad. So let them report when you're doing something good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, there ain't no lie. Yeah, it ain't. But uh, that day was great, man. Just to tag up with the Knicks, man, and, and do that and have Will Chamberlain out there. That was kind of his story. Yeah, well, I, I have a little it. story about this one. Go ahead, Carl. <laughs> I'll make it real quick. I had, oh, a, um, I had a guidance counselor in my high school named, I've got a name right now, but in Hillcrest High School, that was my high school on uh, in Queens. And um, I wasn't actually the stellar student. And you, you she think? Was always, <laughs> And she's always tell me, you know, you know, school may not be for you. You may want to, you know, <laughs> cut this short and get out there in life and, and make it happen for yourself. And I told her that, you know, that's what I'm going to do. So I signed myself out of high school. And um, and the funny thing about it, those years later, we came back to my same high school and we we, we, re we refurbished the park and we, you know, we built it up. We had a big event there and she came out there and, and, and looked at me. And just and she literally cried, man. She literally cried wow. just knowing that um, you know, things worked out for me. And she told me she didn't expect it, but um she was very proud of me. It was, it was a really it was a really emotional moment that time. But doing that at my high school and seeing her face and seeing a lot of people that were at the school at the time that knew me, it was a good feeling to be able to do that. Nah, that yeah, nah. That that's definitely always always something welcome, you know. So we always came back. We always just did it from the heart. So, you know. You know what? I, I don't know. I think we should have. I wish, I wish 
because you look at so like Damon say, you look at social media now. You know, you you get so much um, immediate you know responses from the things you did. You know, and and we know why we didn't promote a lot of the things we did, but you can't. I can't help but think about how it would be now, um, based upon you know how much access you have to people now. What the response would be now doing what we did. You know, I do remember the time, though, what was the hurricane that devastated uh, New Orleans um, that we yeah, went? Katrina. Katrina. And we yeah, went Katrina, right? and, and we gave them um, and we had some old inventory in the warehouse. And we went down there and we gave everybody because all their clothes were ruined and stuff. And we we just we just gave out. What was it? Million like a million? Yeah, that, was, that was hundreds of thousands. Of Montel so Williams. We did Montel Williams. We did with Montel Williams. No, I was saying thousands of units, meaning it was millions of dollars. Right, worth. right, right. And I you mean, know what happened? From every licensee, from sneakers to coats to, you know, outerwear to, yeah, everything. And I remember the other brands that we called up to go help us do that. And I remember them saying, you got to think about the visual. If you give everybody out there your old goods, you still have your product on people who are distressed and may not be looking good in your product. And you're just going to bring down the the value or the perception of right. your brand. And I remember yeah. us saying, yeah, you know what? Uh, you know, you know, do me a favor, go fuck yourself. And we're going to go and <laughs> help these people. Right. And um, and listen, listen. Maybe maybe sometimes when when Fubu took a slow curve, you know, down, it may have been those things, or maybe when we were offered to sell the brand and we felt that we shouldn't do it, and everybody, you know, kind of kind of said, you know, and the first people to say don't sell it were the first people off of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, but but what I like to what I like to sit here and say, and no matter if we don't have, you know, we don't have the exit like we would have loved to, but we we lived by our own rules on that. Right, if we were helping right, people right. and you thought that we, it, it, you were too good to help you because your logos, that's your business. You know what I mean? Like, you know. You know what? That reminds me of when we um, when we were looking for checks in the office and we, and we was like, Damon, what, what's going on with the, um, the distribution? And he was like, we got $22 million worth of inventory in the warehouse that we need to sell. So we, we sold all of that inventory, but a lot of the inventory was was you know, and it fell on the floor, had got dirty, that, you know, you couldn't really sell. I remember going to the warehouse and it was like four huge boxes of clothes. And we were like, well, what are we gonna do with this stuff? We can't sell it, you know? So we were like, we're gonna donate it. Donate it to who? We're gonna donate to the homeless shelters. You know, these, these people need clothes. And we went out and we put it on, you know, to, went out to all of these shelters, gave out all of these clothes. And then I remember, like, the backlash, like, three or four months later was like, I ain't wearing FUBU. Homeless people got on FUBU. And it's like, okay, you know, if that's your reason for not wearing it, cool. But, you know, at least we did a good deed and we felt good about it. And, and we can hold our heads high and know that we did something that was, you know, much needed in our community. So, you know, things yeah, like that. The crazy thing about it is, they, I saw an article recently that a lot of brands, they will burn their clothes before they give them away. Yeah, and uh, I, we, I just couldn't see ourselves doing that. You know, what I mean, it's just so many people that we know, either personally or or, or indirectly, that could use those that stuff. And some people may say it harmed us, helped us, but we just had to do what um what we felt was morally right. Uh -huh. yeah. And a lot of people right now are watching, they and they're in pain, and or they know people in pain. And you know, all of us sit here, we all know people who are business people who business has been devastated eighty percent. And I, I call them up, you know where they're at? They're out there helping somebody else who doesn't right. have anything. So, you know, you see the good and the bad and the ugly of people through times like this and, and behind the scenes of brands and businesses and products. So, you know, I think we had in FUBU and still have a double bottom line. Maybe when we had that old inventory that we couldn't sell or even if we could sell the 22 million, maybe we would have offed it for 15 million or 10 million in discounters. But I think we made more off of uh, being able to dress people who didn't have any hope at the time. And uh, the bottom line there was to be able to live with ourselves and be able to be here to tell the story. Right. You know, so. And the blessing uh, come around, you know, you do good, good comes to you, you know. For, for sure, for sure.